they also have to undo a lot of what's been done to their head in, in themselves. And, and even becoming aware of that um, is a chore. Yeah, I mean, I have to agree with you guys because that's what I went through. I, I was a theist and a deist, and then I finally became an atheist. But the thing that made it possible for me was to, to see that it wasn't so bad. It, everyone goes through that gateway of despair, but there, there it's possible to live a, a, a positive, productive, meaningful life as an atheist. Yeah. And it, it wasn't until then that I was able to. So I think that one of the main things we should focus on maybe is to try to show them like uh, writers like Bertrand Russell and people who can who can show you that you can't have a meaningful life. Yeah. Uh, and until we do that, I think the logic arguments help, but they're not going to do it. Yeah, well, I actually like to start out more basic than that. When people uh, write and ask for atheist book recommendations for a theist, I usually don't go with something like The God Delusion. I start with a book that is about scientific reasoning and critical thinking and just say, you know, forget about the atheism for now because when you're in the habit of trying to poke at your beliefs and try to figure out the weaknesses in them, that's when you're vulnerable to becoming an atheist. And I think that people have to be led through that stage first. Yeah. And if they're a theist, but they still learn critical thinking and scientific reasoning, uh, hey, you know, that's better than when they didn't have it. And depending on what they believe, I think like Bart Ehrman's uh, Misquoting Jesus, where he's mm -hmm. talking specifically about the Bible, um, that could be of interest to somebody who has like specific devotion to the Bible. Um, if they are interested in that, it's, it's a way of looking at um, what, what exactly are the textual criticisms and how does that work and how are these books evaluated and how do we come to conclusions about when they were written and how they were written and whether or not they were altered. If, if, they, if they're at a point where they actually feel like it matters it, what's true, because a lot of times what's true only translates to what's doctrinally correct, but if they're at a point where truth would matter to them more than their doctrine, something like that could have an impact. But, it, but mm -hmm. like uh, Russell was saying, there's, like, there's kind of a continuum where you have different stages in development. There are some people who just have an epiphany and they say, oh my gosh, you know, this just isn't real. But um, some people it takes some time and different pieces of information for them to finally reach a point where they say, oh my gosh, you know, was any of this true? Uh, back to what Tracy said, that it's a very fear-based belief. I think that's a part of it, but I think it's more uh, seductive than coercive. Uh, it, it just it pulls out so many of our core desires and, and wants and needs uh, to have someone that's always looking out for us, someone that's, that loves us no matter what. I think that's really more, that's, that's what really causes us to hold on to it so fiercely uh, as opposed to the fear, even though that is a factor. Yeah, well, I just want to say uh, yeah. thanks, you guys, for having me on. You guys are doing great work, and I, I enjoy your show every week. Thanks. Thanks Thank for calling. Thank you for listening right. and watching. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that if people didn't either enjoy what the religion, I, I mean, like, get a nice feeling from what the religion tells them, or be afraid of what they th uh, what would happen if they didn't believe the religion, then because we've already pointed out that there's really no good reason behind it, <laughs> there, there wouldn't be uh, even those emotional reasons to get involved. So, I mean, you know, people have beliefs for a lot of different reasons. Correct. But, uh, Correct. Uh, but I mean, it usually falls into some category of either, uh, either it's very well demonstrated to be true or there's a good emotional reason to believe it.